Southland Baptist Church. So let's stand and sing number 479. I am resolved, number 479. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a Lord. service in a word of prayer. Be seated. Hey, man. Thanks for being here tonight. We have some other folks on their way still. I know folks are traveling. Uh, some folks on work out of town. But we have tonight a first time attender. All the way uh, from the womb of Lindsay. Uh, Charlie's with us tonight for the first time. How many days old is he now? He's just under two weeks. Yeah. You don't know how many hours and seconds and all of that? No, I don't have that figured out. I don't know. <laughs> hey man, it's sure good to see you guys here tonight. Of course, Lindsay's had a, a bit of a battle, of course, with surgery and then infection, and but doing lots better. It's sure good to see you guys here, and the wonderful. It's also good to have all the way from uh, a country that really does exist called Finland. I know I heard someone the other day say Finland wasn't a real country, Brother Valley, but uh, Brother Valley's with us tonight. He's uh, flying back to BC on Friday, and then. Uh, flies back to Finland uh, in just a week or so, but I'll uh, be praying for him. It's good to have him here for just a, a little while, and uh, good to be here tonight. We're going to go ahead and take uh, prayer requests this evening, uh, take new uh, prayer requests tonight. Who has a new prayer request? Let's, of course, be praying for uh, the dear folks in Texas with that horrible, horrible shooting. Be praying for all those folks affected. Be praying for Brother Ahmad. He's in Calgary. Ask us to be praying for him. Uh, meetings and uh, he was a bit sick yesterday, but be praying. Uh, praying. He thinks he got food poisoning. He probably ate his own cooking. That's probably what happened. Uh, but be praying for him. Any other new, new prayer request? 
tonight. I feel like I'm someone I wanted to share something. I'm trying to remember who that was. Oh. Yes, Valley. Oh, wow. Sunday meal. And uh, what they said is, uh, what they indicated that earlier, even before I visited them, that it is so hard for them to befriend any of the natives in there. And of course, the language is uh, a bit of a problem, too. It's just like you were trying to learn Chinese in 15 minutes and, and then uh, fly off to Mozambique and practice it. But, uh, so we could pray for them that if um, God would have in, inroads into their hearts and perhaps see that we would see some, even one saved to start off with. Amen. Is that, is that the... Is that the same the same family you told me about quite a while back? Quite a while back, the barber. Or? It's the, the, the yeah the barber. Okay. Parents. Okay. And then the parents' friends because apparently the about half a dozen six to ten years ago in that time span, quite a few of them came. I I would think that there's several hundred living in that city. Roman capital of Finland. So there's a, a small community of them. And of course, be, being Kurds, they stick together like glue because they're sure. not Arabs. Sure. But they're, they, they speak Arabic as well as they speak Kurdish. And some of them also speak Turkish. Gotcha. Be praying for that family there in Finland. Any other new prayer requests tonight? Brother Darren's nodding his head. I guess he means I need to check my phone here. Let's see. Be praying for an unspoken. Uh, Maria has asked us to pray for an unspoken request. And then also, uh, she said, praise God that William's oxygen is significantly better. And she's hoping for another miracle to be off oxygen by his, his connected, corrected second birthday. So we keep praying uh, for William. There. Yes, Karim. Okay. If he sells drugs, there's a position that block right over the. No. I'm just teasing. Be praying for Timothy. So he's looking for work. What are you looking for? No effort, lots of money, right? <laughs> well, seriously, is there anything in particular you're looking for? Okay. Praying for Timothy's for a job. But I would stick with the low, low effort, lots of money. That's always good. Carrie? Um, how oh, yeah, thank you. That's, that's what I was trying to... Thank you so much. I knew there was something I wanted to share. Uh, be praying for Tasha's stepdad, of course. Uh, Tasha's family moved here uh, from BC. Uh, that was the first of May, I think. And then right after they came, uh, Tasha got sick, and I believe Grayson was sick, and uh, or at least the whole family got sick. They had COVID, and of course Tasha is expecting her due dates five days away. And then she got better, and the, there'd been some sickness back and forth, and. Uh, her stepdad traveled out to BC, and I guess they think maybe it was around some family there that had COVID. He's back here now. Uh, he's sick. Uh, they took him to hospital last night. Yeah, they took him to hospital last night. His oxygen was low, and his seven heart issues as well. Uh, so be praying for him. He is in hospital as Tasha's stepdad. 
and uh, of course be praying for the rest of the family and especially be praying for Tasha. She's, she's doing okay, but uh, her due date is just a few days away. So be much in prayer for Tasha's stepdad and of course for healthy baby and delivery and all of that. But it's been almost a month uh, they haven't been able to be at church. So be praying for the Hoxie family. It's been a, it's been a, rough, a rough month for them. Any other? Peggy. Um, pray for me. Um, we're having my memory tested on the 15th. I'm glad they're not testing me. I'd fail, Peggy. Be praying for Peggy. She's having some, some tests run. Any other? New yes, ma'am. Okay. Be praying for joy. Be praying for those that are traveling. I know we had lots of folks that traveled uh, for a long weekend. I think there's some families still traveling back. So be praying for those folks as they, as they find their way back home. Any other new requests? Ms. Lois, how's Stuart? Any better? That's great news. That's really good. Any other new prayer request tonight? All right, let's go ahead and take these uh, requests of prayer tonight. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come to you. Lord, we praise you for being our wonderful Savior. We thank you for meeting our needs. Lord, we confess openly tonight that your mercies are new every morning. Lord, we have the opportunity tonight to come to you, to bring these needs to you. Lord, to acknowledge we need you. And Lord, we need you involved in the lives of others. Lord, we trust you tonight. Lord, I think of, first of all, as we go to prayer, Lord, I think of the families affected. Lord, by this horrible tragedy in Texas. Lord, so much loss of life, so much brokenness and hurt. Lord, I pray that you would give the calm, the peace, the comfort that's needed. Lord, I pray you just be very close to those dear folks. Lord, I pray for Brother Maud, Lord, as he's was not feeling well, Lord, now away and travel and business, Lord, I pray you just bless the meetings, give safety, uh, Lord, as he travels. Lord, I thank you for opening the door for the valley to get to come, to be here for a couple days. Lord, I pray you just bless the remainder of his trip and finalizing the things he needs to care for. Lord, I pray you give him a smooth transition back to the U.S. and then back to Finland. Lord, just uh, bless him there. Lord, I pray for his opportunity of witness once he gets back to Finland. Lord, I think of this Syrian family. Lord, seemingly a door that would never be open, but Lord, seemingly a door you've opened miraculously. Lord, I pray you would work there. Lord, I pray that you would convict hearts. Lord, I pray you'd give Brother Valley the wisdom to, to share uh, carefully the gospel and truth with them, to show Christ. Lord, I pray you just work there, do a miracle. Lord, bless him there, Lord, as he has opportunity to witness so many that have well, never heard anything but the state religion, never heard the gospel. Lord, I pray you just bless. Lord, I think of this unspoken request that Maria mentioned. Lord, I pray you'd meet that need. Lord, I thank you for the many miracles you've done already for little William. Lord, we're petitioning you again, asking you to show yourself powerful. Uh, Lord, that he might be able to be off of oxygen totally. Lord, very near future before his second birthday. Uh, Lord, I pray you just bless and meet that need. Lord, I pray for Timothy, Lord, as he's looking for work. Lord, I pray that you would show him the exact opportunity. Uh, Lord, that you have for him. Lord, I pray you'd show him your will. Lord, I pray you'd make it very obvious. Close doors that you want closed very quickly for him, that he might find exactly what your purpose for him would be. Bless him, Lord, as he prepares to start university here in the next at Nate in the next uh, little while. Lord, I pray you just uh, be with him on that course and blessing. Lord, I think of the Hoxie family tonight. Lord, it's been a difficult month. 
Lord, I pray you'd bless them, but we sure miss having them here. Lord, I think especially of Tasha's stepdad tonight because he's in hospital. Lord, I don't really know all the, the details other than he's having some trouble with his heart and trouble breathing. Lord, I thank you that although I don't know all the details, and Lord, if I did, I couldn't fix them. Lord, I thank you that you're the great physician. Lord, you're the one that created him. Lord, I pray you'd raise him up and heal him. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you give him an opportunity yet again, Lord, to see his need of a Savior. Lord, I pray for Tasha. Lord, I think of that little baby that is so soon to come out into the world. Lord, I pray you just be with her health, guard her and baby, protect her. Lord, be with the rest of the family. Uh, Lord, I pray you just bless, Lord, her mom, and Royce, and the kids. And Lord, we just ask for your hand to be upon them. Lord, I thank you for being able to meet these needs. Lord, I pray for Peggy. Lord, I pray you'd be with her, Lord, as she goes through around the test here soon. Lord, I'm sure... She, as we all would be. She's nervous, Lord. I pray you'd calm her fears. Lord, I pray you'd just be with her as she goes through that. Lord, I think of joy. Lord, if she's got a cough, Lord, I pray that you'd raise her up and strengthen her, give her complete healing. Lord, I think of others that are traveling. Lord, very many are away for holiday and traveling back. Lord, I pray you'd give safety on the roads. Lord, I pray you'd give blessing. Lord, I pray for our city. Lord, the great need of the gospel here. Lord, I pray you'd bring forth laborers, raise up laborers into your harvest here. Lord, help us to see the need for souls to hear the gospel here. Lord, I pray you'd bless us as we endeavor to meet that need the best we can to our ability for your glory. Lord, I pray you'd give us fertile soil, Lord, to plant the seed of the word of God. Lord, not only just our city, Lord, I think of our province. Lord, so many people that have never heard the gospel. Lord, so many communities even here in our little part of the world that have not a gospel preaching witness. Lord, I think of two churches I know of right now without pastors across our province. Lord, I pray that your will be done, Lord, that you would raise up, that laborers would answer your call. Lord, I pray you would bless our country. Lord, in the midst of moral decline, in the midst of seeming apostasy all around us, Lord, I thank you that you're able to do a great work. And Lord, I believe that a great revival, Lord, a great work is happening and beginning across our country, here in our church and around the country. Lord, I pray that that would be the case. Lord, I pray that we would see a uh, great impact of the gospel. And Lord, I think of the world. Lord, what a great, vast thought to think of how many people there are in this world. And Lord, how humbling to realize how many of them have never heard the gospel, how privileged we are. Lord, I pray that you would send forth laborers to those places where there is no gospel witness. Lord, I pray that all the world may know, Lord, we know that it's your will that not any should perish. Lord, I think of missionaries tonight. Lord, I think of those that we as a church have an opportunity to minister with and partner with. Lord, I pray that you would bless them and meet their needs. Lord, I pray that you would give them a great and effectual door of opportunity of ministry where they are. Pray you give them safety and protection. Pray you give them wisdom, Lord, as they lead the ministries where they are. Lord, some in difficult situations, some in uh, difficult different situations than we are, different cultures. And Lord, I thank you that you're able. And Lord, I pray that you'd give them wisdom. I pray you bless them. Lord, I pray you'd help us as a church to be faithful, to keep a faithful support. Lord, to keep praying. Lord, to hold that line. Lord, I pray you'd bless us as a church. Lord, we look forward to a little over a month and a half from now celebrating 17 years. Lord, of being in this city, Lord, if you tarry your coming. Lord, more than a number of years or a number of times that we gather together as a church family, Lord, I pray that you would give us more souls. I pray you'd help us to reach further. I pray you'd help us to minister to more hearts. Lord, I pray you'd help us to be able to penetrate our city with the gospel effectively. 
Lord, would you meet these many needs mentioned tonight, Lord, others on the hearts of those gathered here, others on our list tonight, oh, those that are looking for work, those that are struggling with health issues, or those that are dealing with uh, health issues on a daily basis. Lord, I think of those dear folks that have those daily struggles. I pray you'd minister and meet their needs. Lord, I think of those that are dealing with difficult family situations. Uh, Lord, we just ask for your will. Uh, Lord, that you might receive the glory, you might receive the praise. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about Colton, come lead us into the song tonight. Let's sing number 588. My sins are gone. Number 588. Ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why, because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, good enough for me, praise God, my sins are gone. T'was at the old time altar, where God came in my heart, and now, my sins are gone. The Lord took full possession, the devil did depart, I'm glad, my sins are gone. There underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary As far removed as darkness is from dawn In the sea of God's forgetfulness It's good enough for me, praise God My sins are gone When Satan comes to tempt me And tries to make me doubt I say, my sins are gone got me into trouble, but Jesus got me out. I'm glad my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, good enough for me, praise God, my sins are gone. I now for Jesus, I'm happy night and day because my sins are gone. My soul is filled with music, with all my heart I say, I know my sins are gone. There underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, good enough for me, praise God, my sins are gone. Good singing. Amen. I noticed tonight as we're singing, uh, the bottom of the page, I never noticed who wrote this song, but uh, my wife and I had the privilege several years ago to go to Winona Lake, uh, Indiana, to the Billy Sunday uh, Museum. And uh, this song, particular song, was written uh, during one of the great gospel campaigns that were there at Winona Lake. And uh, that's uh, back in 1934, I think, Miss Lois. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about your age, the same age as our building. I mean, she was scared for a minute, uh, but 1934. And uh, that's an awesome, awesome old song. Uh, we'll go ahead and share some announcements quickly. Uh, for the week, of course, our regular schedule uh, of services uh, throughout the week. Plan on being here for our Sunday school at 10 a.m. and preaching at 11, 15, and 4 on Sunday. And, of course, we continue our Bible study on Wednesday night in the book of Philippians. We're going to try to get the whole lesson done tonight. We'll see. Uh, we may be uh, tag teaming this lesson for next week, but uh, plan on being in your place. And then this Saturday, uh, I encourage you to come out and be with us. Unless we have a rainstorm, which is a possibility, uh, I'll post something on the church Facebook page, hopefully praying the rain passes by. Uh, but plan on being here at 10 a.m. 
uh, on Saturday as we go out here in the community to share Christ and uh, get the gospel out. So I hope you'll be here with us. Then men, actually our, uh, not men, our first Sunday of the month is June 5th, and uh, we'll be having our fellowship uh, after the evening service. That's the 4 o'clock service, and uh, we'll be looking at our theme for the year, which, of course, is free in Christ and uh, bring a lot of food so me and Derek can eat it all. And, or Charlie, maybe Charlie wants to eat it all. And uh, so plan on being here with that. And then, fellas, uh, this Sunday I'll have more announcement about this, but uh, on uh, June the 11th uh, will be our men and boys uh, fishing outing. Uh, tentatively, uh, and there you go. You got a boy just in time there, Derek. I saw, I saw, you, I saw the wheels turning in your head. And uh, we use Charlie for bait. But uh, for pike fishing, they work perfect. Oh, it'll be great. But uh, that'll be our first... Uh, first time doing that, we were gonna. I was gonna do it the Saturday before Father's Day, like we did with the ladies' high tea for Mother's Day. Uh, but uh, it's gonna be such a busy weekend. We've got a missionary that day. Uh, we're switching it. This is the normal men's breakfast Saturday, so we will not be having our men's prayer breakfast that Saturday. And we will have our men and boys fishing outing probably around 10 o'clock, and we'll plan on bringing some food. Uh, with us, maybe bringing some hot dogs or something like that to cook up. Uh, if we had faith, uh, if we were men of faith, we just plan on eating fish. Uh, but Joel, I don't think we're that great men of faith, and we better bring some hot dogs, and uh, we'll have something to, to eat together. I'll, I'll share all the info about that. We'll have it all finalized by Sunday uh, so the fellows know direction for that. So that's the men and boys fishing. Uh, then the following Sunday is Father's Day. As I mentioned, it's going to be a very busy uh, weekend. Uh, that weekend, we're looking forward to Father's Day, looking forward to honoring all you dads. And uh, we've got a special gift for all the dads that day. And we're also uh, going to have with us missionaries, uh, missionaries going to Hungary, uh, the Allen family. And Mrs. Allen's uh, father uh, is a pastor uh, there in Hungary. And uh, so they had definitely have a leg up having the culture and language there already. So be praying, plan on being here for that day. Also, uh, that same day, busy day, that morning right before the uh, morning message, we're going to have just a short uh, baby dedication uh, for Jehu. And uh, so just a, just a great day that day. So plan on being out, being in your place. And we'll share some more announcements. Sunday we're going to have some more announcements for the rest of the summer. But that'll be all of them for tonight. But uh, let's plan on being in our place, uh, plan on uh, following what the Lord has for us and uh, trusting him as we go forward. I want to ask Joel, would you mind helping me? You don't have a baby, do you? Okay. Do you want to help me with the offering tonight? If you would. I didn't want you to bring the baby because you can't carry as much money when you have a baby. You find out quickly you lose a lot of money when you have a baby. Yeah, exactly. But if you would lead us in prayer for the offering, Joel. As we sing number 630, it's just like his great love, number 630.
just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. Sometimes the clouds of trouble be dim the sky above. I cannot see my Savior's face. I doubt His wondrous love. But He from heaven's mercy see, beholding my despair. In pity burst the clouds between and shows me He is there. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. On the last. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine. Lois, take your Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 1. We spent a couple weeks on a kind of an introduction lesson to the book of Philippians. Uh, spent some time looking in the book of Acts at the, the genesis of that local church. Uh, looking at what God did and how God did it, uh, being reminded as we see here uh, in the Scripture that it is what God does, uh, that God's working in us, God's working in the church in Philippi, God's working in the ch our church, God's working in our life. Uh, tonight we're going to switch gears a little bit as we begin. And we're going to talk about what to do with the gospel. And we're going to read, I hope you follow along with me, the first 11 verses, Philippians chapter 1, uh, tonight. In verse 1, the Bible says, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in, Je in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in prayer, every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I love that. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds... And in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ and the glory and praise of God. Let's pray together. 
Lord, as we come to this passage tonight, as we begin and continue our study in this wonderful epistle to the church at Philippi, Lord, we find some wonderful truths in this blessed book. And Lord, tonight we get the answer of what we should do with the gospel. Lord, I pray you'd help us to receive your truth. Lord, I pray that we would realize the importance of the gospel. Lord, so little of the gospel is being preached today. Lord, so few, quote-unquote, churches care anything about the gospel. Lord, may we see the importance of the gospel. Lord, may we have a hard reset, maybe, in our life, and our mind, and our thinking. Lord, I pray that you minister to the needs of thy dear folks here in this room tonight, to those that are watching via live stream. Lord, I pray you minister to every heart. Lord, I pray that you meet needs. Lord, I pray there would be truth tonight that would be shared, that would be used by your Holy Spirit in the lives and hearts of thy believers, that they'd be helped. Lord, help us. Help me, Lord, to teach you right your truth. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the freedom we have to gather. Thank you, Lord, for this time we can open your word together. Lord, may you have the preeminence. Bless us now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It is significant in the fact that such a small passage in the Bible that we would find the word gospel seven times. Seven times we see the word gospel. It is a, that word gospel is a glorious word. It means the good news. The good news. John 3.16, we have the gospel in miniature, if you will. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 through 4, we have the full uh, Webster's de Dictionary definition of the gospel, uh, which is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's, it's a glorious word. It is a precious word to you and to me. The gospel is the key. Were it not for the gospel, I would be on my way to hell. Were it not for the gospel, you would have nothing to long for, nothing to hope for, nothing to wish for. It, it is a precious, precious, precious word. How many of you like coffee? Any coffee fans here? When... For me, coffee's a precious commodity. I, if I ever spill coffee, I get upset. Sunday morning on the way to church, I had uh, an espresso. Actually, to, I guess to be more appropriate, I had what the Australians and New Zealanders call a long black. And I had it sitting in the cup holder. I'd, I had just a little bit left on the way to church. And as I took a corner coming to church, I heard it fall. And I went, no! And I looked down, and praise God, it wasn't my coffee. My phone had just slid across the car. I didn't care about that. I said, forget the, forget the phone. At least the coffee's okay. <laughs> I picked the coffee up and said, praise God, I had the last few sips of coffee. I didn't lose it. Now, the gospel should be very precious to us. But it is in our world and becomes progressively more so a word that is hated. A word that is hated by the devil and all those that would, that I've seen a man hold a sign, a picture of one of the, one of the most vile things I've ever seen. I saw a man holding a sign, I think it was maybe at a, a pride parade or something, but the guy, the sign, not a Photoshop, an actual picture of a man that was holding a sign that said, if Jesus comes again, let's kill him again. That, that's the world we live in today. And much of the world hates the gospel. It, it is also a, a very misunderstood word. Those that do not know the gospel assume the gospel is something that it is not. They assume the gospel equals religion. Uh, I was just... Uh, out for a couple days, just got back this afternoon, out trying to find a bear that wanted to come home. Uh, how many of you would like to have a pet bear? I really want a pet bear. I, I, saw, I saw three little ones the other night, Miss Lois, and if my wife had let me get away with it, I, I'd bring one home. 
I have a Yeti, a buddy to play with. But I, I was trying to bring one home not to play with, but put in my belly. It didn't happen. It's all Darren's fault. But bears are related to, the, to pigs. They're in the same family as pigs. But to say a bear is a pig would be a misnomer. There, I've seen a dog before walk on two legs, and we say, you know, humans, we, we're bipeds, we walk on two legs. Uh, but it would be a fallacy to say if I saw a dog walking on two legs, well, that dog walks on two legs, that dog must be a human. Uh, that's circular wrong reasoning. But much of the world has that reasoning that the gospel equals religion. That's why oftentimes when I talk to folks and try to share the gospel, and I hear the phrase often, I hate religion. I don't like religion. When I say to them, I agree with you. I hate religion too. They look at me like I just said that, you know, I was an alien and I just stepped off my ship. And they say, you're a pastor. You can't hate religion. I said, no. I said, I hate the same religion you hate. Because the definition, the world's definition of religion is man doing something good to get to God. That's false religion. I hate that kind of false religion. But many people equate, and we're going to talk about the gospel tonight, they equate the gospel with religion, uh, which is not the case. The gospel is, the Bible says, the power of God. The power of God. It is that dunamos, that dynamite, that power. I remember when I was in college, a guy, a friend of mine, we lived in Indiana, in Indiana, you can go, they have giant fireworks tents set up. I mean, everywhere around the 4th of July. There are some places in Indiana, 24-7, 365, all year long they sell fireworks. It's a very firework-friendly state. And, but around the 4th of July, they have tents set up and extra buildings set up for fireworks. And One of my buddies went and bought a bunch of uh, cherry bombs, a quarter stick of dynamite, you know, talking about the little... How many of you ever ever blown something up? One of those dropped one on the toilet. Darren, you probably did that. Uh, he bought a bunch of these things. I was 18 years old. Man, the only fireworks I had ever handled as a kid was a sparkler. How many of you ever had you had the sparklers? That's not even exciting. But man, a cherry bomb. Oh, that was some kind of exciting. We dropped them in trash cans. We had great fun with those things. Lost some hearing, and. I didn't realize how explosive they were until I lit the first one and tossed it in something and thought it would contain the blast, and it did not contain the blast. It was more powerful than I expected. The gospel is that power. It is the power uh, to salvation. Uh, it's the power to overcome the power of darkness. It's the power to awaken and to save and to transform. Praise God for the power of the gospel. We won't take time tonight to turn there, but we can look back in Acts 16 again and see that power in Acts 16, verse 14, Acts 16, verse 18, uh, verse 26 to 34. See that power. The gospel is an identifying word. Anyone who is truly born of God will speak of the gospel, not of religion. It is an identifier. It identifies those who are his. It is the gospel. And it is a biblical word. And that's why tonight we're going to talk about what to do with the gospel. Uh, because it is a biblical word. Uh, Romans 1.1, 1, 1, if you want to write some references down, I'll give you some quickly. We won't turn there for sake of time. Otherwise, we will be a couple weeks getting through this. But Romans 1.1, 1, 1, it is the gospel of God. We see that in the scripture, we see Romans 1.16, we see the words, the glorious gospel of Christ. Romans chapter 2 and verse 16, we see my gospel. Ephesians 1.13, the gospel of your salvation. Uh, Ephesians again, chapter 6 and verse 15, the gospel of peace. Well, I love that, the gospel of peace. I'm reminded of the testimony of a man that I met Several years ago, a man that wrote a book uh, uh, about his testimony, uh, Son of Hamas, is the name of the book. Powerful book. 
Powerful book written by a young man whose father was one of the founders of Hamas. This young man who wrote the book used to be the leader of Hamas youth. But he got the gospel uh, because he heard a gospel preacher talk about forgiving your enemies. And he said, my dad is the most religious man I knew. And he, he said, I knew without a doubt his dad's the head of Hamas. He said, my dad could not forgive his enemies. He said, whatever that man is speaking about is more powerful than what my dad knows. And it was the power of the gospel that led that young man to Christ. But we see the words there, the gospel of peace. It is the gospel in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, the gospel of his glory. Not the gospel of our glory. The gospel of his glory. Where I'm from, we have wild turkeys. We have some in southern Alberta, but we don't have any here. And wild turkeys are they're weird critters. They're ugly. They're scared of everything. They're just they're odd, weird, unusual creatures. But when it becomes mating season for turkeys. You know, the turkey doesn't walk up to the female turkey and say, hey, you want to see how much money I make? He doesn't go up and say, hey, check out the car I drive. He doesn't say, hey, come check out my nest. I got the nicest nest in the bush. He goes up and he sees a hen turkey and he goes, Poof, and he puffs all the feathers out. And he struts around showing off those feathers. I got to wonder what goes through the mind of the female turkey. Pretty nice feathers. Kind of like those feathers. I think that's the father of my children. Uh, but it's ridiculous to me. The, the mating rituals, they show off their plumage. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, I, guess, I guess that's the one. You got pretty nice feathers. You got a pretty nice... <laughs> I think I'll go there. But understand, it's about the glory of that turkey showing off and strutting and <laughs> puffing out. Dragging that wing and showing how big he is. So often as Christians, we think the gospel is us <laughs> puffing out, showing off. But it's not for our glory. The gospel is his glory. Before we get in here to the, the notion tonight, the gospel in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, it is an everlasting gospel. Ever lasting gospel. Now, we're going to have a split decision here at church tonight. If I ask you to raise hands, I won't do it. But there are some of you here tonight that if you look at a package and that package has a Best Buy date on it and you realize that it's now past that date, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but there are some of you that would throw that away. And then there are people like me. I look at that and go, it's only been three years probably okay. I have a bin that I keep out in my shed that I have, I call it my camping food or hunting food bin. And most of that stuff I bought at Liquidation World. By the way, when you buy stuff at Liquidation World, it's already expired. And it's been out there for a while and I'm looking through it and I saw, I pulled something out through the night. My wife was there and I said the date. I think that Nixon was the president probably when it was made. I, yeah, I'd probably throw that away. But I opened a package the other day. D Darren wasn't brave. I opened some uh, chicken, uh, spicy buffalo chicken jerky nuggets. Now, they were kind of green and hairy, but I looked at them, and eh, they might be okay. I looked at Darren. I said, you want some? No. But I ate them. I paid for them, after all. Uh, I scraped the hair off with my teeth, uh, used it as floss. But no, it wasn't bad. But there are things that go bad. Did you know milk goes bad? ever tasted bad milk? Ugh. There are things that rot that they don't last. It's frustrating. You pay so much money for groceries, and then you go to your refrigerator to get it out and realize that thing you spent so much money on that you forgot was in your crisper. You ever been there? And you open the crisper drawer and go, oh, it's bad. I praise God the gospel has no expiration date. It is eternal. The eternal gospel. Just a few points tonight. Number one, what are we to do with the gospel? 
We talked about the word. We talked about what the gospel is. What are we to do with the gospel? Number one, we are to share. We are to share the gospel. In verse 5 in our text, it says, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. These believers in Philippi were participants in the gospel. You know, if you go to a sports, a sports game, how many of you are following the Battle of Alberta? The Edmonton won last night, right? They were ahead three to something. A friend of mine messaged me while I was laying up looking at the stars last night. But, you know, if you go to one of those games, you don't play hockey. You sit in the stands. The guys on the ice play hockey. You're not a participant in the hockey game. You know, if Derek went to the, the next game and game started, he runs down the stands, jumps over the glass, lands on the ice, grabs a stick, and says, okay, guys, I'm here to play. He'd be in jail. They'd be like, whoa, buddy, no, get out of here. You're too short, man. We don't want you. Uh, you got red hair. We definitely don't want you. All kinds of bad things. I know we get him out of here. We don't want him. No, he'd be arrested. He's not allowed to participate in the game. He can watch the game if he pays enough for the ticket. But these believers in Philippi, they were participants. Christians, we are to be participants in the gospel. There is to be no spectators when it comes to the gospel. When it comes to believers, we are to be participant. Fellow. Notice the word there. I love this. The fellowship of the gospel. Joint participation in a common interest, a common activity. In other words, it speaks of those that were involved in getting the gospel out, not just Paul, not just those that were laboring there, but those that came to Christ, like the Philippian jailer, like those ladies that were praying by the river that got saved and formed, I believe, the foundation of that church there in Philippi. They were involved in sharing the gospel with other people. They shared the gospel. Of course, you and I are to share the gospel with the lost. With the lost. First, I'll read it for you very quickly. I want to ask you to turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16. The Bible says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for the necessity is laid upon me. Yea, get this statement, Woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel... And Christians, can I say woe is unto us if we preach not the gospel? We have to share the gospel. Uh, the thought here is of that fellowship back in Philippians in our text, the fellowship of the gospel. And if you look over at chapter 2 and verse 22, it says, But ye know the proof of him that as son with the Father he has served with me in the gospel. Speaking of Timothy. Timothy was a fellowshipping partner in the gospel. A fellowshipping partner in the gospel. He worked with Paul getting the gospel out. And how wonderful that is. In chapter 4, look at chapter 4 quickly. Chapter 4 and verse 3. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. With Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. We see here that the church at Philippi was not a group of spectators sitting in the stands watching what was going on. They, they weren't watching someone bat the gospel back and forth like spectators at a sporting event. They were fellowshipping. They were together, ministering together, getting the gospel out. How are we to share the gospel, share in the ministry even of the gospel? Look in verse 3 in, our, in, in chapter 1 in our text. We read, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. We share the gospel, we're to be thankful for one another. Every time Paul thought 
of these believers, these Philippian believers. By the way, how many of you know that the, the believers in Philippi had problems? There's some real problems there. And we're talking about people that came out of paganism. <laughs> we're talking about some messed up situations, no doubt. The same kind of problems we have. The same kind of problems in our pagan culture today. They were there. Paul didn't say, oh man, it's a perfect church, a perfect people. Because that doesn't exist. By the way, if it does exist, don't join it. You will ruin it. It wasn't because they were perfect. Paul thanked God for them and the remembrance of them. That's true Christian fellowship. May we catch that. So we're so worried about catching this or catching that. Uh, now I heard about monkeypox. I asked Veli tonight if he knew if you grew a tail, if you got monkeypox. Because if you do, I want to I wanted get monkeypox. You know, the, those, the, the evolutionist, Brother Gerald, they say that, you know, we evolved from a monkey. You know, pretty soon we realized we didn't need a tail to hang around, so our tail dropped off. Hogwash. You know how handy it would be to have a tail? <laughs> how many of you have ever driven a five-speed manual transmission and tried to drink coffee at the same time in a city? You know how awesome it would be to have a tail out there holding my coffee while I'm shifting? I, used to, I did all my outside reading in college. I worked a full-time job while I went to Bible college, and... Every book I read, every book, I read on my steering wheel while I was driving in Chicago. It would have been handy to have a tail to turn the pages. While I was, by the way, five-speed transmission. Uh, it would have been handy to have that tail. But I digress. We, we're worried about catching everything, but may we understand we need to catch this matter of true Christian fellowship. All joking aside, we, we need to come in contact with the reality of Christian fellowship, of just loving and caring about one another. And, and we see Paul here being thankful. And he did more than be thankful. Look in verse 4. This is a powerful statement. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all, make him request with joy. We're to be prayerful for one another. So, oh yeah, I prayed for you. But Paul said in every prayer, when I went to my God and I talked to my Father, every time I talked to him, I thought about you. I prayed about you. As he fellowshiped in the gospel with Paul. In verse 4, we see that. We see it in verses 9 through 11. Uh, we're told what he prayed. And that's, by the way, verses 9 through 11. We won't take time to read again, but that is a powerful prayer that Paul prayed for these believers uh, he prayed they'd be more loving. He prayed they'd be more discerning. He prayed they'd be more spiritual. He prayed they would be more sincere. And he prayed they would be more fruitful. That's a powerful prayer. We ought to be more prayerful one for another. A Christian, are, are we praying like that for one another? Are we fellowshipping in the gospel in such a way that we pray for one another that way? And are we loving one another? Look at verse 7. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both of my bonds and the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Reminded of David Livingston, whose body was buried under the soil in Westminster Abbey. But a group left Africa and came and petitioned for the heart. Dr. Livingston. And that heart was carried back to Africa. For they said, his body may reside here, but Africa had his heart. Do we have a heart for one another? As we share the gospel together, as we minister in the gospel together. Number two, and I've got to hurry here. Look at verse seven. I said, number one, we're supposed to share the gospel. Number two, we're to safeguard to safeguard the gospel. Verse 7, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both of my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Notice the words, the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Skip down to verse 27, chapter 1. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. 
that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. Notice that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Can I tell you, when Paul was given these words by God to pen, there were many enemies of the gospel. By the way, Paul was in prison when God gave him these words to pen. They were enemies of the gospel. The gospel had hordes trying to stop it, just as it does today. We're to safeguard the gospel. We need to obey the warnings we find in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 18. And also, I'll read for you quickly in Jude. We see a warning in Jude 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Remember, we're living in the days of apostasy where there is another gospel. There were many other gospels, but there is only one true gospel. There's lots of false gospel, but there's one gospel. Many are preaching that false gospel. Uh, we're to be faithful. Uh, our great truths, I'll share some things quickly here. I want to try to get through this tonight. Uh, some things that often are denied, often are removed or twisted in the gospel that changes the gospel into that which is none effect, is there's those that preach a gospel that has no virgin birth. A gospel without the virgin birth is no gospel. A good man that died is no gospel. Uh, there are those that preach a gospel with no sinless life, no sinless Son of God. Can I tell you, John eight forty six is very, uh, very specific about that. There are those that preach a gospel without a vicarious death. Just that, oh, we have the teachings to follow of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, I have more than teachings. I have him who died for me. He laid down his life for me. He took my place. By the way, I have no gospel without the resurrection. The gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If I've only got a death and a burial, that happens every day. That happens every day. But there was a death, a burial, and a resurrection. The resurrection removed, negates the gospel. By the way, his visible return, without that it negates the gospel. Why? Because it makes him a liar. And if he's a liar, there's no gospel. You know, the inspiration and authority of the Bible is questioned today so often. Chopping away at the gospel. Making it of none effect. Number next, we are to spread the gospel. We're to spread the gospel. Verse 12 in our text says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. I used to work for a company called True Green Chemlon. How many have ever seen the True Green uh, trucks? I fertilized and killed weeds. Fertilized grass, killed weeds. Nowadays, I just fertilize my weeds and kill the grass. But uh, I used to get paid for taking care of lawns. And uh, I had a, a big truck. I had a couple of big sprayer tanks. and I'd run the hose across, and I'd be out there spraying those lawns back and forth, running 100 miles an hour. But sometimes I had to use a dry fertilizer, and I had a big fertilizer hopper. I'd dump the bag in, put the bag on, run the lever, and take off running. And I'd be pushing that thing and the pellets, <laughs> fertilizer pellets going everywhere. If I just opened the lever and sat there, the fertilizer would just come out on the ground. And the customer would call in a couple of days when there was no grass <laughs> because it burned the grass. I had to spread that fertilizer. That fertilizer had to be spread out to do the job. What am I to do with the gospel? What are you to do with the gospel? We're to do the same thing with the gospel that I did with that fertilizer years ago. We're to spread it out. We're to get it everywhere. As we think about spreading out the gospel, understand 
We spread it out by telling it, by preaching it, as we're commanded in Matthew 28, verse 19, to every creature. We see it illustrated in Acts chapter 8, verse 4. But look in Philippians, again, there, chapter 1, and verse 12. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. Paul said, the things that have happened, what things, Paul? Well, I, I'm in jail. They knew that. They said, he said, don't worry about me. I may be in jail. But just so you know, God's done this so we can get the gospel spread out. Christian, you and I are to get the gospel spread out. Brother Veli's heading back to Finland in a few days. Brother Veli's there so he can spread out that gospel. By the way, you're not going to Finland. You're, you're in Edmonton. You know why you're in Edmonton? So you can spread out the gospel. Every one of us are to spread the gospel where we are. We're to get the gospel out. So vital we understand the importance there. Acts chapter 16, verse 20 through 25, we looked at the last couple of weeks. Paul and Silas are in prison, and they sang, and they worshiped God, and they praised God. Imagine that. There they are. <laughs> They've been beaten. They're all jailed up. And they're singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Or some song. Maybe it wasn't that one. They're singing, praising God. And the prisoners went. Did you hear that? Are they in the same kind of cell we're in? They got the same sewer in the floor that we got? And they're singing? And they're talking about Jesus? What was God doing? Getting the gospel out. By the way, that jailer outside the cell who had heard the singing and heard the praising and heard the worshiping when he was ready to kill himself, you know who he went to to find out if it's going to be okay, I'm going to go talk to those guys who were singing in there. As he said, what must I do to be saved? They were spreading out the gospel. We need to spread the gospel. Imagine if when Paul and Silas had gone down the hallways of the prison, when they saw a prison guard, they went, and spit in their face. In fact, man, you take these cuffs off, I'll punch you in the face, buddy. I don't think they'd have spread the gospel too well. Can I tell you that they obeyed the Lord in spreading the gospel? Second Corinthians, turn there with me if you will. Second Corinthians chapter 12. What a poor testimony it would have been for Paul. What a poor testimony for us when we do things that keep us from being able to spread the gospel. When I push that fertilizer hopper, Around those yards, I wasn't doing small yards like we have in Edmonton. Most of the properties I did was out in country club areas outside of Chicago. I was doing massive properties. And I had to work myself to death to get things done. You know, if I started pushing that hopper and I pushed it for about 15 minutes and I realized I forgot to pull the lever for the fertilizer to come out, I'd have been pretty upset. I would have said, man, all of that effort wasted, all of that time wasted. Worse than that, I would have said all of that uh, incentive bonus wasted that I'm not going to get for going over my revenue budget. I, I would have been very angry. Christian, how much of your life, how much of your effort is wasted because any time your life is not spreading the gospel, we're wasting it. Look there, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. I guess it would help if I turned there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I was in 1 Corinthians. Verse number 9, the Bible says, And he said unto me, My grace, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly. Therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Christian, are you willing to allow whatever the Lord wants to come in your life that you might spread the gospel? We need to spread it. Lastly, look back in our text, if you will. Look over in verse 27. In verse 27 in chapter 1. 
Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. Let ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Number four, and I believe most vital, we need to show the gospel. We need to show the gospel. Verse 27 here makes clear the word conversation, by the way, which means manner of life, our behavior, what we do, where we go, what we speak about. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15, it says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the the world, our manner of life, our behavior ought to show forth the gospel. The decisions of your life ought to be a conduit for every decision to show and shine forth the gospel. How many of you remember maybe you had a friend that just got engaged? Do you remember when that happened? Do you remember when you got engaged, Colton? I wasn't there. They don't, they don't let me go to California. It's too hot there for fat guys. They push me back into the ocean if they see me there. But you got engaged in California, right? On the beach? Was there any fat guys like me you thought were as a whale you are going to push back in the ocean? Probably so. But probably after you got engaged and, and B got her ring, I, I wasn't there. Maybe this happened, maybe it didn't. But most likely what happened? Everywhere that B went after she got her engagement ring, she walked through every door like this. The first thing through the door, I got engaged. Unless it was the smallest ring I gave my wife, in which case she put her hand in her pocket and said, I got engaged yesterday. You know, trying to show that off. It's like you put, you put an engagement ring on a hand, it's like helium. It just starts to raise for some reason. Uh, trying to show that off. Christian, we had to show off the gospel. You had to show off the gospel at work by being the hardest worker on your job. You had to show off the gospel at work by being faithful, by being honest, by having integrity. So, Pastor, how, how's that show in the gospel? Because it shows the gospel did something different to your life. Those of you that work in the secular world, you know, you know very well that most people that you work with, most likely in every industry across the board, if they could get away with something, they'll try to do it. If they, can, if they can do something that benefits them and not the company, they're going to do it. Why? Because that's the, the fleshly, worldly pattern. It's what can I get? What's in it for me? I was joking with Timothy about the least work for the most money. That's what we want. That's what our flesh wants. We don't want to put in the work and put in the labor, you know, I knew a guy that uh, you could, remember the old days with the card clock in, clock out? Anybody ever, ever do that? Uh, that's so old school now. Some of you know what that is, but the tick, tick, you hear the click and punch in. Well, most of those time clocks, you could, there was a couple minute window either way. Some of you lazy people, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you could clock in a couple minutes late. You'd clock out a couple minutes early, and you'd still get paid for that time. There was a guy, we called him the hoser. Uh, that I worked with at a trucking company. A man, about five minutes before time to quit, he's standing over there with a time clock with his time card. He's just waiting for that second to get just right. He's out of there. You know, as a Christian, we can show the gospel many ways. We can show forth the love of Christ to our neighbors, to our community. We see here this speaking of showing the gospel, the testimony. Paul said that I may see your testimony, your conversation, that it becomes the gospel. We won't take time to look tonight, but we could see in James 2, 17. We'd see it. Look at, let's look at uh, Titus quickly. Titus chapter 2. And verse 10. Not purloining, 
but show in all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. They may adorn. When I spent time in Chicago, when I was in Bible college and ministering there, I often noticed the large Hispanic population and community in Chicago. And it seemed that that population back in the 90s when I was there, they shared one thing in common, all the different Hispanic communities. It seemed like that they all had a propensity towards one thing that was very evident. They loved to adorn their vehicles in the same way. Most, most of those in that community would have hanging in the top of the windshield inside a little fringed uh, thing that hung that said Mexico or Puerto Rico or wherever. Uh, they'd have their flag in the vehicle. Uh, they had different things that they would do to adorn. And you could look and go, yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that truck belongs to somebody from Mexico. Uh, like, what gave it away? Was it the Mexican flag? Was it the word Mexico across the front? Uh, was it the plastic spinner hub caps? It was all of those things. Uh, it was easy to see. You could, they adorned it in such a way it made it obvious who it belonged to. Christian, do we adorn our life in such a way that it makes it obvious who we belong to? Look back in our text, and we'll close here in Philippians 2, verse 13. As you're turning there, I read a a bit of prose written many years ago. You are writing a gospel. Men read what you write. A chapter each day, whether faithless or true, by deeds that you do, say what is the gospel by the words that you say according to you. Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The secret to being able to share, to safeguard, to spread, and to, and to sow the gospel and show the gospel in your life is found there in verse 13. It's God. It's God working in you. Let God work. Let God do the work he wants to do. What are we to do with the gospel? Obey what God wants. Let God be in control. How many of you have ever thought to yourself when you're riding in the car with somebody, that you wish there was a second steering wheel and a second set of brakes and gas so you could, so you could take over. You ever been there? Well, Darren was probably there this week when he was riding with me. And you, man, you want to grab a hold and take the wheel. <laughs> you want to slam the brakes. My mom was in a car accident when she was, probably when I was a little boy or before I was, right before I was born. She was with, I think it was her cousin. I think she broke her foot or something trying to push the brake in the accident. She was in the passenger seat. <laughs> she tried pushing for the brake, but there wasn't a brake there. You know, so often we want to push the brake. We want to stop God from working. We need to just let God be in control and let him do the work he wants to do through you and through me that we can get the gospel around the world. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the encouragement about the gospel tonight. I thank you for the reminder of how precious and holy it is. Lord, I love reading about this fellowship of the gospel. These men and ladies that stood shoulder to shoulder with Paul and ministered together with him. Lord, true Christian fellowship. Lord, give us that kind of fellowship. Give us that kind of thankfulness for one another, that kind of prayer for one another, that kind of love for one another. God, help us to safeguard and walk guard around the truth of the gospel, not to allow, not to accept a counterfeit. 
Lord, to share it pure and true and unadulterated. And Lord, may we realize that the gospel needs to be spread. Not hoarded up somewhere or squirreled away, but God, may we spread it around the world. May we spread it around our neighborhood, around our city, around our jobs, around our community, around our friends. Lord, I pray that we would, by our life, by our decisions, by our actions, in our relationships, in our, our work, and in our community, Lord, everywhere we go and everything we do, may it show forth the gospel, may it be adorned in such a way that folks would know that's a, that's a Christian. The gospel changed him. The gospel changed her. Lord, help us to see the importance of the gospel. Bless us now. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us. Lord, help us as we leave this place, Lord, to, to shine forth that gospel. Bless us now in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and be dismissed this evening.